Hello and welcome back to the Perth to Paisley podcast, episode number 159, where Hearts managed to actually just keep winning away from home, which is a novelty that we are not used to at all. As ever, I am Daniel McIver, but as we said in the last episode, Adam's away, he's busy doing university work, which is fair play to him. So, had to get new guests in, and we were thinking, who can we get in? We've got the usual run of people, but I was like, let's go back to the start, let's get the first ever guest on this podcast Everybody who's watching or listening to this will know him because of his extensive work with the club over the past couple of years. But he's now the media executive at Bristol City. It is the return to Heart of Midlothian-based content of Jalen Films' Jordan Allen. Jordan, how are you? Yeah, good, mate. Thanks for having me on again. I actually didn't realise that I was your first ever guest, so I'm flattered. So thanks very much. It's only taken another 150 episodes for you to come back. Yeah, (laughs) Well, yeah, glad to be back, mate. I was wondering when I was going to get asked, to be honest. So, uh, yes, I just sat there down in Bristol. Just be like, I've literally just been sat here the entire time, just wondering. That's fair. Very sorry. That's Adam's fault. He should have let you know. But as yeah, I said, shambles. you now are away. You're no longer up in Scotland. You've you've almost went as far down as you possibly can as well yeah. in terms of trading Edinburgh for Bristol. You're the media executive now at Bristol City. Obviously, going from heart to or your club, but still like playing in Europe and stuff like that. But then just going to a championship team, it's not like you're suddenly just going, right, we're now in front of 500 people in the National League. You're at a big yeah. club, big crowds. How's that been for you? Yeah, it's been it's been great. It's, a, it's been a big change because it was like the first time I'd ever been away from home. Like I've lived mm-hmm. with my parents up until, since, up until I left to Bristol. So it wasn't only like, you know, moving job, it was moving location, living by myself and all that so um it's been it's been good it's been um a learning experience still yeah. still learning on the cooking side you know i've been making chicken nuggets in the in the oven That's and that so uh, yeah i'm getting better um uh, yeah living in like a rented place just now but then um, me and my missus have uh, I bought a house so we'll be moving into that in like june so looking forward oh, to perfect properly settling um into that but um yeah the jobs jobs been great it's been mega busy um yep but enjoyable. Um, I think my first week was a bit manic because I came in, they played Ipswich at home, got beat, then went to Cardiff, which is like the derby, the rivalry, yeah. got beat, and then Nigel Pearson got sacked that week. Of so course. My first two weeks were just like, is it always like this? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, no, I've, I've loved it. Like, Bristol's a lovely city. It's similar to Edinburgh in ways, similar to Glasgow in ways as well. So, All right. Um, bit of a mix between the both, I'd say. So uh, yeah, no, loved it. Been yeah, I'm very happy. Nice. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear because obviously, whilst it's a risk in terms of you're moving to the other side of the country, it's also a risk because I imagine. Correct me if I'm wrong. It is similar in terms of you're at a club with this expectation and there's a large fan base. So you kind of have to be like even from people who are behind the camera, literally like yourselves and like general staff. I imagine there's still just a pressure of like got a lot of people paying attention to everything you create even with all the videos you do obviously we're seeing stuff with like players that you've helped involve and then like lovely wee documentaries about that old fan was like amazing mm. you see how how's that been has it been a big jump in terms of when you were at heart or is it kind of similar to what you've been doing yeah it's difficult because it's although like on social media on like twitter and that Bristol city i think have more followers than Hearts, mm-hmm. but the interaction isn't isn't close to what Hearts get. Right, okay, which is interesting. So, like everything I put out at Hearts, we get like I don't know, don't know what the numbers were, but like yeah. loads of likes and stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, and then at Bristol City, there's a lot, a lot less like, like regularly, mm-hmm. um, unless we do something that's like extra special or something in it yeah. that, that goes crazy. But um, yeah, in terms of expectations, pretty similar to be fair. Um. In terms of the fans, though, I have like I think the Hearts fans are a bit more demanding than the Bristol <laughs> City fans are. That's probably that's probably something to do with Hearts. You know, they want to be third. Like mm-hmm. every season, we want to be up there. Whereas Bristol City at the moment have kind of just been mid table most seasons, yeah. and the expectation obviously is like they want to be higher, but it's more of like a a, a slow kind of process. So I think uh, they're a b- bit more forgiven. There's times where like, we've got beat and we've been like we've been terrible, and I'm. I'm like, why are the fans not booing? <laughs> Still time whistles gone. I'm like, why are we not booing? We should be fuming right here. 
<laughs> well, that is a perfect segue because obviously you were at Hearts where we had a massive high and then the season ends in a massive low in many ways considering the drop-off that we had last season. But in the season that you've been away, it's been generally pretty successful. There's not been much to boo for. And from afar, because obviously as when you are working is when Hearts are playing. So you're not able to especially go from what you were previously and where you are literally there every game, seeing every single wee moment, to now you're having to just catch it when you can. What's your thoughts been on the season so far? I've been very jealous that this is a season that we've decided to be class, to be honest. <laughs> and and uh, Ewan that's replaced me on in my, my old job at Hearts is getting a great season out of it. So yeah, yep. jealousy uh, was, was the first <laughs> emotion yeah. that I was feeling. Um. Yeah, no, I've actually been able to catch it more more often than not because Good. like there's a lot of games that are Friday nights here and and oh, Mondays course. and Tuesdays and I hear we yeah. have to squeeze loads of fixtures in. So yeah, I've caught I've caught them quite a lot. Um, and yeah, just been impressed. It was like, like there's been games where we've we've been like what well, there's been I don't know if we went one or two 0 down. Was it I can't remember. Was it um, Dundee? Was it I can't remember. Dundee, yeah, two 0 down. Yeah, there was a few of them though where we've, we've went a goal down and you're just not worried. Yeah, I just, I've not felt worried. I've been like, yeah, we'll probably still win this, and we and we have been, which isn't a feeling I'm used to having as a Hearts fan. Um, yeah. which is imagine how a lot of the old firm fans kind of feel when they go one one nil yeah. down away from home or whatever. They just they know that they'll they'll climb back and win it. So yeah, it's 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 weird, but um, yeah, good. But I'm missing missing being there. Yeah, and seeing it in person. Absolutely, and yeah, really interesting that you mentioned the kind of old firm mentality because a lot of people have said that. That's what Naismith has kind of brought into us, this belief where it's like, it doesn't matter, we'll get back into this game, whatever the score is. The Dundee game, we were 2-0 down, end up coming back to win 3-2. We were 2-0 down against Ross County, end up coming to draw it and stuff like that. What has been your thoughts on Naismith? So, obviously, you left and he kind of came in. You caught the tail end of him when he was caretaker, obviously. But his first full season... What were your thoughts on him getting the job initially? Obviously, we didn't start the season particularly well and there was very loud pressure to get rid of him, but the board stuck by him, clearly, correctly. But how have you felt his first season in management kind of generally has been? I think it's probably exceeded most people's expectations, to be honest. Um, I always... It was funny, because when he came in as a caretaker, like I'd seen him, seen him and spoke to him like occasionally when I was... Mm work in there and I just think he's like he's, he's a great guy as well and he's yeah. you can listen to him talk about football forever really so I was I was always like really wanting him to succeed so yeah like absolutely delighted that we are currently um hopefully that doesn't change anytime soon but um yeah I think it would be fair to say that he's exceeded expectations with like a coach coming in that's not had any kind of first team experience of managing and just absolutely like doing the way that we have is is unbelievable. Getting a result away at Celtic as well is just like you can't ask for any more than that. <laughs> exactly. So, That's um, very fair. Yeah, I'm very impressed. And yeah, long may it continue. And it continued this past weekend when Hearts travelled through <laughs> to I was about to call it Love Street, but it's no Love Street. It's the Samisa Stadium. Samisa Stadium, indeed. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I don't right. know if that's how you say it or not. But. I know. I don't actually know. New St Mirren Park, I think, is another name for it. Mm, not heard that one before. Again. It's got about oh, eight well. names. Paisley. The St Mirren Stadium. Yes, exactly. We travelled through there, and immediately there was alarm bells ringing for a lot of people because for the first time in the league this season. Hart and Lothian did not have their star striker, star player, hero to us all, Lauren Shankland. Now, we were also missing Carl Munhoff, who remains out with a hamstring injury. Benny Beningamy was going through a sickness bug. He missed out. We then find out that that is why Lauren Shankland is missing as well. However, you were speaking there about how you're still confident we'll always get back into games, that it's okay, the goals will come. What were your thoughts when you saw us line up and go, Oh, we don't have Shankland at all here. Yeah, I was. I think I was in in the tunnel at the Stadium of Light at the time when it came through. I was like, "Hang on a, hang on a minute." <laughs> and I was like, "Well, who's playing up front then?" Was my first thought. Um. So yeah, no, I, a little bit concerned, 
yeah. um, considering that the majority of our goals have came from him this season. Um, and well, he's also not scored in a few games as well. So yeah, true. and we've we've been doing okay. So yeah, a bit mixed emotions. But I was I was baffled at first. I thought, oh no, he better not be like injured long term. Oh, I know that. Yeah, yeah, delighted that he hasn't been. I know. Yeah, terrified. Um, but yeah, it made me stop all the work I was doing for about five minutes to <laughs> be like, hang on, what's going on here? Just scrolling through all the replies. <laughs> Announce the real lineup, admin. That was a lot. There was a lot yeah. of that. So yeah. the real lineup, however, was Zana Clark remained in goals. We were back to the back three slash five that Naismith has said he's employing in specific games. It was Stephen Kingsley. I was about to call him Clark Kent because of the way the team ah, yeah. <laughs> ends up going. Frankie Kent, Kai Rolls with wing backs of Aaron Cochran and Dexter Lembekisa, George Grant, Cammy Devlin, and for his second start, Macaulay Tate. And then to answer your question of who was up front, the BBC are saying it was a double of Kenny Vargas and Alan Forrest. But the way it felt was more Kenny Vargas was through the middle with Alan Forrest kind of just buzzing about the way he was. Now, yeah. the back three slash four, Adam has made his thoughts perfectly clear on the back three, how he hates it, how he wants it to never appear again. I've said that I definitely prefer the back four. However, can understand the back three slash five. When you get results like we did at the weekend, and you mentioned it, the result against Celtic at Parkhead, where we played this system, can you understand why Naismith seems to persevere with it more than maybe some fans want? Um. Yeah, I mean, it's the way that he wants to play, and it's been working most of the season. Yeah. So I can I can't see why he wouldn't be persevering with that. Um. And he's showed before that he can change it if if need be. So like, yeah, I don't see I don't see why not to be honest. Yeah, that's very fair. Now I will say, we have both in preparation for this podcast watched the Hearts highlight package yeah. for this um podcast. They're quite short. They miss out like <laughs> quite key moments that I can remember from the game. Right. But it's I fine. definitely haven't seen them. So yeah, we'll go yeah. through. So if you're maybe thinking, what about the Kenny Vargas chance in the second half? Hearts didn't view that big enough to put in the highlights package. So we're no thinking it's worth. Okay. It. Yeah, I have no podcast. idea. So so don't worry, everybody. We're not just losing our minds. Blame the club because the first highlight is the first goal. As 32 minutes in, Alex Cochran swings in a free kick. Vargas gets on the end of it, does well, fires the ball goalwards. However, it's blocked out for a corner. There is the tamest of handball shouts from the heart's end, but goes out for a corner. However, Alan Muir is telling them to wait, telling them to wait, telling them to wait, and eventually is asked to go to the monitor, which I was about to say usually means, but in this game we will show that it doesn't always necessarily mean that a decision is about to be changed. You see it back before we get to anything. Do you agree that it is a penalty? Yeah, I think so. It's it's um it's one of these ones that's like it's harsh, but like because yeah. the way that he's going down there to try and block it, your arm probably is going to be out there. Mm -hmm. So it's harsh, but it's just in the in the laws of the game now, I reckon it is. Yeah, the, what did you think about the silhouette thing that they look at? His arm is not in the silhouette; it's yeah, up, yeah. and especially when they're sliding, isn't it the thing where it's like if you're using an arm to like support yourself, if it hit that, yeah, that fine, would be yeah. fine. But it was the fact that he put up his arm above his head. Yeah, I, it kind of hits like his elbow. I think. Yeah, it's around there kind of yeah. thing. Again, I agree with you that it is in the current rules of the handball situation. It is a penalty. Um, yeah. The talking point throughout the season has kind of been who is the penalty taker because for so long it was just obviously Lawrence Shankland. Then he yeah. missed four on the bounce, I think it was. Three or four. I, think, I can't I think remember. Three. Maybe and three. Maybe Grant I'm doing them over. a disservice. But sorry, Lawrence. You've missed Maybe one not. game and I'm trying to act like you're not that uh, Because I remember, I remember him scoring the first one in a while and it, and it just went in. I think the keeper gets a hand to it or something. Oh, like yeah. That. Who was that against? I can't even remember. Was it Hibbs? I can't remember. I no. genuinely can't remember who it was. It was yeah, something where you were like, he's missed. Oh, no, it's in. It's yeah. fine. It doesn't the most, matter. The most, like, you, you did, the most penalty you, you would expect after missing three. Exactly. So there was a clear emergence of George Grant becoming the penalty taker, even when Shankland was on the park. However, he wasn't on the park, so everybody knows, right, 
George Grant. We should probably now at this point mention the wind that was mm. just ruining the entire game. There's a moment um, where George Grant, about 20 minutes into the game, goes to put the ball down for the corner and the ball travels 25 yards <laughs> in the other direction and subs yeah. have to go and get it for him. So I was thinking, as soon as he runs up to take this, this ball's got to move. And I think that's what was in George Grant's mind because instead of doing his usual, which is like yeah. powerful into a corner, he just goes, nah, putting power behind this and hitting it low, straight down the middle. It manages Zach Hemming, who's trying to give him patter beforehand and point into a side that he's going to. No, George Grant steps up, scores. As you have mentioned, you listen to the podcast and Adam has made his thoughts crystal clear on George Grant that he doesn't <laughs> think he does enough that he would move him on the summer. George Grant, generally, coming out of this game, has received quite high plaudits. He was thought of as one of the better players. Do you view this goal as, right, this is it, now he can kick on, or do you think it's another false dawn of another performance where it's like, right, finally, George Grant's got to do something, and then we'll have the Livingston game where he drops yeah. a 6 out of 10 performance, and you're like, right, okay, we're back to the start. Yeah, I don't know, because every time I've watched him, you can tell he's a really he's got such a good like he's so techy. Yeah. And I watch him in training that he's always like I'm always like, bloody hell, he's very good. Mm -hmm. And then it doesn't always come out in games, which is probably like he he's probably annoyed about that as well, yeah. to be honest. But I I think there's a really, really good player in there. And I think it doesn't come out as often as it should. Um so I don't know, maybe I would I would I don't know if it, this is gonna be the, the moment that kind of lifts him because he's had go he's had penalty goals before and Yeah. And I don't think we've seen a new level of George Grant since then. So yeah. we'll see. But um, yeah, I really, I really, I think, I really think he he will turn it around and 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 show the Hearts fans just what he can do at some point. Yeah, I, I very um, much hope so. You raise a good point there, by the way. I, I'm going to ask you. I hadn't thought of this. Are there any yeah. players? in training that you saw that you think would surprise fans with how good they consistently work? Because obviously I imagine there's players that everybody will go, well, Lauren Shanklin scores hunters in training, Craig Gordon saves a million things, Frankie Kent heads everything, blah, blah, blah. But were there any players where you were like, God, he's really good, that maybe fans will go, oh yeah, they were, they're fine? Um, I'm trying to think. I think the first one that popped into my mind was Alan Forrest, but then recently he's, he's started to kind of Show sure why but that's a good one because it has only kind of been this season where he started to get in, but you've you saw him for quite a long period of time where fans were kind of losing patience with him. Yeah, he was always banging in goals and training and dribbling past folk and floating defenders and that. So <laughs> that's a um, mental image. I know, yeah. Um some players are just like that, eh? They can it's just that, that atmosphere when you're when you're playing in a game, it's it's much different, it's much harder to do. Um yeah, I don't know. I was going to say I don't know whether to say it, but one that was the opposite. Okay. Um, yeah. The first time I seen Tagawa play in training, I'm like, oh no. Oh really? I was Shit. like, oh dear. I hope, I hope he gets a George Grant moment where he so gets I, a I goal. Hope, and I don't just know because goes... it, it, it may be unfair because it, it was early when he first came, and obviously right, it took him a fair. while to settle. Like with Yutaro Oda, it kind of took him a while yeah. to settle and stuff as well. But I was immediately like, "Oh dear, this is not this is not good." <laughs> I think, um, fairness, but hopefully, since then he's he's looked a lot better. It's a point where maybe you think, "Oh, we don't have Lawrence Shanklin at the weekend." Tagawa is technically a striker, and he doesn't get a second on the pitch. Maybe Naismith is thinking, yeah. alongside similar lines to you. Yeah, I hope I hope he does well. But uh, yeah, I wasn't very impressed when he first when he first got here. That's absolutely fair. Someone who a lot of people were impressed with at the weekend, who seems to be a constant kind of, people seem to either love him or hate him, was Kai Rolls, where Kai was just thought of as Beckenbauer at the weekend, essentially, because he, he got into that mindset that you sometimes see Kai get into it. He's done it a lot for Australia, but when he first arrived, he was doing it a lot, where he just has that moment where he just steps up a lot and will attack def attack opposition attackers and then drive with the ball and you saw that numerous times at the weekend which is great to see because obviously 
there's the the debate about who do we start when everybody's fully fit. Obviously, Halkett has gone for surgery again, so therefore we're in another position where okay, we need to wait until next season. However, the belief is that Alex Cochran is going to be moving on in the summer due to the Penrice signing. Penrice will be coming in. Kingsley's really hit form again this season. Frankie Kent's obviously come in and been amazing. But the one side that kind of seems to be an issue, as everybody's been pointing out, is right back. Is Atkinson and Lembekisa, where neither of them can really stake down a place. For you in the summer, is that where you think is the main focal point that we should be kind of be like, right, come on. Michael Smith left two seasons ago or whatever <laughs> it was. We need to get another right back. Um, yeah, maybe. I, th- I always felt like Atkinson got too much stick for what he deserved. That's fair. Um, I don't know. I just... Maybe maybe, maybe a right back. I don't know. Is is because Lembekis is just a a loan, isn't he? Well, Lembekis is in a weird position because yes, he is just in a loan. However, he he did the media two games ago ahead of the Kilmarnock game, and Brian McLaughlin was asking him, "Oh, would you be interested in coming?" And then that made everybody realize, "Oh, he's out of contract with mm. Wolves in the summer." And Dex did that player thing where he was just like, yeah, yeah. I don't want you to focus on the future. I'm happy with my playing time kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. But would you, for example, be fine if we got Dex on a free contract or just brought him in, however, whatever his contract situation is, would you be happy with those two being here permanently as our right-back options? Um, yes and no, because I think Dexter's showed loads of good stuff going forward. So I wonder if maybe they'd look at him Kind of moving up, yeah, and, and maybe being on that kind of wing rather mm-hmm. than the actual right back position. And I, like I say, I know it's probably unpopular with this, but I do think that Nathaniel Atkinson is a very good player. He just has these moments which frustrate a lot of Hearts fans. I think he does the little cut in thing and run yeah. in the middle of the park. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, that would probably it probably would be a a priority. But then again, like maybe a backup striker is also a priority. I don't know. Well, that's uh, for me. That's the big one because we're probably losing Shankwood. It's like right, eh, yeah. We, I, I love Kenny Vargas, but we need to get a striker in. If he got, uh, yeah. I can't even. Uh, what I know that would be the worst thing in the entire world. So, yeah, um, I think striker. I would probably be more. I think that I would put that in to be more important to get a striker. That's very. Um, yeah. Seeing as we do have two right backs, bear in mind, like we don't. A lot of Hearts fans aren't. Aren't too happy with both of the options, but yeah. it, would, it still yeah. is bodies. I would put striker more important than the right back, but right back should also be a priority. Absolutely fair. So, from the Hearts' perspective, in terms of the highlights package, that was the only highlight of the first half. So we move <laughs> straight into the second, and the first kind of couple are St Mirren swinging a corner, and the wind just takes it completely over Xander Clark. However, it's well cleared. The kind of biggest. Worry from the first hour comes as Tanza plays a ball over the top to Olisanya. He runs onto it, rolls and Kent, then both try and deal with them. However, it hits off Kent and shoots towards Anna Clark, but Clark does very well to get it down and push it away. This is kind of the only time I'm going to be able to ask you this question, and it's the question that every Hearts fan is speaking about. Who do you want to be in goals just now, Xander Clark or Craig Gordon? <laughs> I think it, like a lot of Hearts fans have already said, it is probably quite harsh to drop Xander Clark. Yeah. With the way that he's playing and the amount of clean sheets that we've been keeping, I'll bear in mind we didn't against St. Mirren. But, um, and then Craig Gordon being a, a cup keeper, it's actually made me think, like, who's actually going to start in the semi final? Well, that's what I was going to say. I, I think he'll start Gordon, but I think it's a bit harsh to just go, right, Gordon, you've yeah, had big semi-final. Spartans and Morton. Now you yeah. need to go to Hampton. Yeah. I don't know. We all know what Craig Gordon's capable of. So, like, yeah. we all know. We all secretly probably want him to be the, yeah. the keeper in the in the team. But you can't fault Xander really at all. So I can't remember I think... what game it was recently where Xander looked like he was going to go down hurt. And he was, like, sat. And Gordon... It was at Town Castle. I, I was there, I think. Because I think it was um, I think it was St. Mirren at home. 
I was think it? it was, yeah. I, I think came it up, was. I came up and like just to see my, my mates and all that that weekend, and I literally just got home, jumped straight on the bus, straight to the game. And I remember that, and I was like, well, I'm going to get to see Craig God. And it was like, everybody in the ground was like, yes, Sander, yeah. be There was some going around next to me, I'm like, what's going to happen? What must what must be going through Which your mind? Which is such a shame on Sander. <laughs> I know. Poor guy. Um, it's just like, I've kept like 13 clean sheets, I've yeah. made some amazing <laughs> saves, and the first yeah. sign that I might be hurt, everyone on the ground's like, Good, I'm glad. No. <laughs> no, I think I think Naismith's done it right. To be fair, keeping Xander as as the the number one at the moment, and then on in cup games, giving Craig Gordon a chance. But um, yeah, I will be very intrigued to see who he goes with for the, yeah. the semi final. That's fair, and then it just continues to go well because we got our second, and I don't know how I'm going to try and explain this because Christ, right. The wind helps us a lot. Here. <laughs> I was going to say the wind. I needed to say because when I was at Sunderland, we had, we had the wind horrific as well. And yeah. honestly, there was just litter on the pitch, just swirling the whole way around. <laughs> it was mental. It's probably one of the worst the winds that I've filmed in. I'm like trying to like film like that. <laughs> Horrible. It's like an action cam. In the yeah, it was mental. Um. Uh, yeah. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> well, Alex Cochran used the wind to his advantage, which weirdly. We actually did during the game. It felt like we used the wind more to our advantage. We just we kept on the ground for the majority of stuff. But whenever we got corners, we were just going, whip it out, and play swing. it as if you're going to go to the edge of the box and it'll come right the way back yeah. in. Cochrane does that. And as I've put in my notes, Alex Cochrane sings in the corner and bedlam ensues. Because, right. I, I have no idea who touches that. Yeah. It hits Alan Forrest in the face. <laughs> Somehow, like somehow, it's like a defensive clearing header. It does it in training all the time. That's what I mean. It's class. <laughs> That's what you saw. That was like, yeah. yep, this is it. And then, right, my understanding is, it then hits back against Gogic before eventually it seems to be bundled over the line by Mikhail Mandron. I don't know though. That's like, all I've got to just say. Goes to run, everyone just runs to Cochrane. <laughs> just like, yeah. Yay. He's claiming it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, I swear to fuck, if that's a Cochrane goal, but he's second goal scorer, after I always put him on oh, first, yeah. I would have been devastated. <laughs> but that, uh, yeah, officially, that... according to Footmob, it's been given as a Mikel Mandron on goal. Yeah, I've seen that. No idea. I mean, give it, just give, give Cochrane the benefit of the doubt. Exactly. Good cross, mate. Come on, come on. But then. That is short-lived, because at that point you're like, 2-0, 25 minutes to go or something like that, right, loving it. And then four minutes later, St Mirren make it a bit more interesting, as we ourselves have a corner. It's cleared, however, and Dex Olembekisa, we were just speaking about him, just kind of gets caught under it. He doesn't really know yeah. what's happening on the halfway line. Because we've got a corner, everybody is pushed up, and it allows Olesanya just to run from the halfway line. He's very fast. We've seen it this season. He's really quick. Aiden Denham tries to get back. And fair play Aiden Denham. He actually ends up like catching him. But by that point, he's on the penalty spot. And if Aiden does anything, it's a red card and a penalty. Olasanya does half the deficit. Now, at this point, you were making the point where you were like, don't worry, it's fine. We'll, we can ride out games. However, I'll be honest. That bit of my brain that just went, hearts away from home. Mm. We'll go to fuck this. But, and maybe it is, is this something you feel that should be praise given to Neil, uh, to Naismith? That under Nielsen, I think a lot of people will go, we don't win that game. We probably at least yeah. drop points in some way. Whereas Naismith, the team seem to just be like, nope, it's okay, we'll get through this. Yeah, it's just breathing confidence, really. They know that know that they've done it so many times this season they know that what they're capable of I don't know it's probably just a mindset thing like you say like yeah. they know that yeah they're they're very capable of not slip making the game slip so they're just cruising um but yeah that um I was very worried that Denham was going to get himself sent off when he's like chasing <laughs> him back there I'm like yeah. oh god and he does so well as well Alessandro because he's yeah like rapid like you say but he's he's like kind of holding off 
a couple of them by the time he shoots as well. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Um. Jenk Zander Clark could maybe come off his line a bit quicker. Yeah, I did think that when I seen it, but I don't know. Like it's. It's hard to kind of say in a, in a, in a kind of give situation. Me such it. shit because it's becoming we'll, we'll, a meme yeah. that I just want Craig Gordon back in. I know, so yeah, we we'll, we'll, like... we'll, we'll do secretly. Um, I don't know. It's difficult when, when he's when Xander's kind of looking ahead of him and he's seeing like yeah. three Hearts players trying to get back. So it's like, does he come out and then like? I can understand why he went. He just rounds him. Try and just make a big myself big. Yeah, maybe, maybe he's maybe he's back in one of his defenders to to get yeah. back and. But yeah, it's a, it's a difficult one. Um, and then you mentioned there that you were worried about Denham potentially giving away a penalty. Well, 15 minutes later, <laughs> the final action of the game yeah. happens as McMenamin was brought on at half time for St. Mirren alongside Keanu Bacchus. And McMenamin did really well when he came on, I felt. He was creating problems for us. I thought Cochran generally as a game, I, I posted it on Twitter. Like the stats Cochrane had was ridiculous. Like eight out of nine yeah. ground duels won. He'd never give away a foul despite having the most amount of tackles on the pitch. Stuff like, like crazy yeah, good top, performance. Top class. But on this one instance, he isn't really there. And Aiden Denham is the one covering McMenamin. And listen, love Aiden Denham, but he's not a defender. He's a midfielder. No. And McMenamin plays a, a quite nice one too. The ball comes back to him. And he goes down under pressure, shall we say, yeah. from Aiden Denham. Alan Muir doesn't give anything. He waves it off. He doesn't give us a he doesn't give like a foul to us for a dive. He doesn't give them a penalty, nothing. He just goes, no, move on. However, the ball goes out of play. And much like earlier in the game, he does go over the monitor. But something that we have very rarely seen this season is a referee going to the monitor and deciding, nope. I'm sticking with my original decision. Do you think he was correct to stick with his decision of no penalty? I I think so. There's there's not really an angle from the other side that kind of shows like it uh, like really clearly. But I think yeah. from what the footage that you can see, I don't think there's contact. So I think he gets it right. But That's fair. I'd be interested to see what you think because I know that you're always thinking that, that things are penalties and Adam's <laughs> not. So. So I'm, uh, intrigued. I'm surprised he didn't give it considering what other things have been given for penalties this season. Yeah. I think even the next day in the old firm with the Fabio Silva situation, mm. I think if the roles are reversed, I think the decisions might be different. I think if it's Fabio Silva with Alan Muir and John Beaton is looking at Aidan Denham, I think Beaton goes... Nah, that's a penalty. And I think it showcases yeah. the kind of like subjectivity that we're seeing where I will understand a lot of St. Mirren's frustrations. I generally agree with you that I don't think there is... I think McMenamin doesn't do himself any favours where it looks like he's going down already before mm-hmm. Denham actually So did, did you think there's contact? So I think the contact is through McMenamin. I think McMenamin trails his leg and kicks Denham's leg. So I don't think Denham himself goes, right, Yeah, yeah. I'm going to like half hour yeah, try yeah. and take a swipe of the ball. But even if, there were, even if we go back and watch it and we go, oh no, actually, yeah, there isn't much contact. With the way the league has been this season, I was sat going, we're going this yeah. is going to be a penalty. Yeah, yeah. I, I obviously wasn't watching it at the time, so I didn't have to feel that anxiety as he was <laughs> yeah, at the monitor. But, absolute um, fear. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I don't think I seen contact, so I was I was very much like, yeah, I don't think that's a penalty. Have you heard the rumor about the fact that uh, I think this is just St. Mirren fans were furious, so they wanted to say this. But I saw this on Twitter from a few St. Mirren accounts that the rumor is he couldn't see the monitor because of the sun, so just decided, <laughs> nah, I'm just of course, him that's head. exactly what must have happened. He is there for ages, to be fair. Just like yes, and he is standing like that. So <laughs> yeah. I would love it if it came if in. That's what happened. Couldn't see. Yeah, that's what they should get referees to. Like when we're talking about people talk about this all the time. Like referees should be more open, like about mm-hmm. their decisions after matches and that. But imagine, ah, uh, yeah. To be honest, lads, I, I just honestly couldn't see them on it. Apologies, I've got it wrong. Sorry, St. Mirren, you're top six anyway. It doesn't matter. Who yeah, cares? yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
Well, thankfully, nothing happens and there's no other drama. We win again away from home. An interest that you'll want this shouted out. My dad has been to every away game this season where we've won. Every single game. He's been to 10 oh, really? away games this season and we've won 10 away games. Lucky man. It's like, wh- why is he not just going every week? Just right, right. <laughs> well, then we not stop. Go- yeah, it will. It will. <laughs> the only technicality is, is that we were at the semi final against Rangers where we got beat, but that's neutral. That's not an away game. Right. Okay. On a technicality. <laughs> on a technicality. Yeah. It. We'll have it. I'll so it. we're speaking there about semi finals against Rangers. We've got another one coming up. We obviously have the Livingston game this weekend, final game in the split. Neither, well, I was about to say Livingston don't have anything to play for. They technically do because they're not mathematically relegated, but they are 10 points behind Ross County in 11th. A lot of people seem to have just accepted they're relegated. A lot of people just think we are third. Where are you sat on that debate? So we are currently 11 points clear with six games left. Do you think we have third? Uh, Yeah. I do. So do I. <laughs> I mean, six games left. Eleven. Yeah, that's like what was that four? They've been pretty much four. What four? Yeah. Um, losses and another team to pick up for. So that I just think that's very unlikely, and I don't think we've shown any signs of kind of slowing down. It is us. Um, the most hard thing but ever. Recent, would be. But yeah, I was going to say, but recent as it's not really characteristic of. But True. we did. True. We did throw away. To Aberdeen. Yeah, but that's no so, Stephen Naismith. That's yeah, yeah. That was that was another tenure. It's fine. I think I do think thirds wrapped up. Yeah, and I I also do think that Livingston have been the worst team in the league this season. So I <laughs> I, I won't be surprised at all if they if they do just stay where they are. That's very and fair. go down. However, they'll get a huge confidence boost in one 0 win. At, like, oh yeah, you yeah. <laughs> what about you? Are you think are you thinking where? I we're, think we're, we're sorted. I think we're sorted now. I think the last two games played fourth and fifth, and it for me it was just don't lose and we'll be fine. Yeah. And then we actually ended up taking four from a possible six points. Not the way round I thought we would have done it. I thought we would yeah. have potentially beaten Kelly at home and maybe got a point away. But no, typical nope. hearts just confusing. Yeah, never, me never easy. Exactly. But as a result, we're not really going to spend too much on the Livingston game. However, in a couple of weeks, we do have. What some people are saying, because we clearly finished third, the biggest game of the season and the last important game of the season, Rangers, again, in a semi-final, again, at Hamden. Now, you have been, I was about to say lucky enough, but I don't know if lucky is the word, to be pitch side at the last couple when we have been beaten handily by Rangers. Are you thinking that maybe now you're not there, so we're going to get a massive result? Yeah, I actually am, kind of. I don't know, like good. It's, it would be it would be typical of me to to leave and then we win a cup. Yeah. So I would feel I'll, bad for you. I would feel I bad. Think, I honestly don't think I'd be happy with. It. I'd be fuming. Yeah, that's fair. That's <laughs> nah, so I'm only fair. kidding. No, I'd be I'd be buzzing. Um, you come up for the parade, just staring at them all, just absolutely. Yeah, yeah just watching you and his pitch side, me like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um. I don't know. It's especially when Rangers are are quite strong at the moment. Yes, yeah. it's, it's always difficult to to see us winning at Hamden to to one of them. But I don't we've know. Never beaten them at Hamden. That has to end at some point. Is it just Rangers? We've never beaten at Hamden. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. Of course, yeah. Um, it does have to happen at some point. But I just don't feel too confident. What do you think? No, I'm the exact same. To be honest, I think. We, it's one of those situations where not only is it a typical old firm game where you need to be perfect, they need to be quite off it and you need to get a wee bit of luck. Like when we just beat Celtic at Tynecastle, it's like we were pretty much flawless, they were off it and they got a guy sent off inside 15 minutes and it's like, that's it, that's how you're going to do it. Yeah. At Hamden, I just feel like that that is in my head. I'm like, we've never beaten them here. We've never beaten And whilst yes, it does have to end at some point, I'm like, there's no way the luck is that it's this season. Naismith yeah. first. We've got Shankland. It's like the best striker we've seen kind of thing. I hope I'm wrong. I hope we just yeah. get absolute. But the the one frustrating, frustrating thing is, is that you think, okay, even if we do get past Rangers, we're probably then going to have to beat Celtic yeah, exactly. in the final. Who do you actually... Just... That's an interesting question. 
Who do you want to get through? Because obviously, some people might go, well, surely Aberdeen, because that's an easier way to win. However, a reminder oh, yeah. that if Aberdeen win, we don't get group stage football guaranteed. I'd, yeah, I know. It's a lot riding on it, but I would probably rather play Aberdeen in the final. Yeah. You, you feel like we should win this. We should be Aberdeen, but yeah, you never know when it's a cup final. And that would be the worst thing in the world. That would be like, Imagine. It would be the worst one since like playing Hibs in that final and then being like, we know we can't lose. Yeah. Or, yeah. You, could, you couldn't yeah. enjoy it until after it and if we've won. <laughs> kind yeah. Kind of thing, yeah. isn't it? Oh, I would definitely God. rather have Aberdeen though. Because I yeah. just don't see us at this stage beating Rangers and Celtic yeah, that's in a fair. competition. Like that's just that's so don't know the last time last time we done that. When was that? It was actually quite recently, was it not? We beat Celtic. No. Well, yeah. Well, we didn't beat Celtic. We beat in the COVID season, we beat he- Rangers, then Hibs, yeah, Hibs. then we, and then we Celtic got Celtic in the final. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just it's, it's just unheard of, isn't it, to be both yeah. of them in like the same cup. So But now we've got maybe we'll get past Shankland. Rangers. But we're, yeah, yeah, exactly. Hopefully he's not ill again. Oh, God. No, <laughs> no, no, no. The illness wait, wait when's that? Is it, this is the 21st of April, isn't it? Yeah, he's got a couple of weeks. It's fine. Yeah, he's got he's got time. He'll be fine. Who cares time. if he misses Livingston? I think give a shit. Yeah, we'll it's be fine. fine. Kenny Vargas will slap a few wheels. He do, in fairness, Sorry. Kenny Vargas loves a goal against Livingston, so it's yeah. fine. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I wonder who, is, that, is it? It's in Livingston, right? No, it's at Tencastle. Oh, oh, is it nice? Yeah, I was going to say I'll see how he copes on the Astro, but we should be fine. We should it be fine. We'll be fine, mate. That's it's nothing fine. to worry about with Hearts nowadays. Exactly. <laughs> That's the optimism we like. That's exactly <laughs> what we want to hear. That's so... just, I'm just saying that because I'm not there to worry about yeah, it. Exactly. <laughs> you just see us winning all the time. It's yeah. Like, oh, I'm great. Like, Bloody hell, we're class. <laughs> well, here's hoping you can be class in the quiz as we finish oh, up. Oh no. Jordan asked before we went on if I was doing a quiz for him, and it was like, of course. And the panic that you had in your voice after I told you yes was paramount. You'll be fine. I'm going to get a zero. I can't I, remember. I, just can't. I don't think we did the quiz when you were last on. I think. No, we didn't. Yeah, and you escaped with that. And I then... forgot, but like, I agreed to come on, and I'm like, oh, shit, what about the quiz? Yep. Well, you better have been revised. I'm gonna embarrass myself here, and everyone's gonna be raging at me. But well, I'm ready for it. It's... I'm rusty, lads. Give me a give me a break. I will say, actually, I've just thought of this right now. A lot of these oh, questions no. are based around this season, which you've not been. Oh here dear. For. So this, you've been a bit bullshit. We'll see. However, if you do fail at it, you've got that excuse that you've only up here for any of these games, so it's fine. Right. Yep. Ready. So. As ever, we've got multiple choice, true or false, two normal questions, and then the who am I. We're starting with just a regular question. So, George Grant scored his fourth goal of the season at the weekend, with three of those four being from the penalty spot. But who did he score his one non-penalty goal against this season? Oh, God. Tough first question. I can't even imagine it right now. George Grant. A clue what? I will give you is this is in all competitions. Oh. Who have we played in the cup? <laughs> <laughs> um, this is going to wind me up because I know as soon as you say it that I'm going to know. Who did we play? We played... I can't even remember who we played in the last round, mate. That's how <laughs> far gone I am. The shambles. Oh, uh, it was it was Adrianians, wasn't it? And then before that, it was no, it was Greenock Martin. But I don't think he did he score in that game. I don't know. This is good. Oh. I genuinely nothing's coming to my mind, eh? So and it could be the other cup as well. Have we played that? I can tell you, we've definitely played that. That was the semi-final we got beaten. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, I'm going to just have to guess one of the games that I've mentioned. I can't remember any of the goals from the games either. So, But we won comfortably in at Greenock. Was it 4-1, was it? That was Airdrie. Airdrie 4-1. Yep. 
and then we kind of slogged through it. Agreeing. One no, it was fine. Let's just say four goals. There's more chance than other games. So let's say that he scored against Airdrie. So you were correct in that it is not in the league. It is in the cup. And I'll be honest yep. with you, I forgot about this as well until I started doing it because you've got to go back even further. It's not even um, in that cup competition that you chose. It is in the first one. He scored his only other goal this season to open the scoring at Rugby Park against Kilmarnock. I don't even remember that game. I didn't remember the game either. I realised it's the one that Alex Lowry scored the like 90th minute winner in the Oh, rain. mate. Was that there? <laughs> I think I was there. You were there. there. That makes it so much better. I don't... I think... Was I? I think I was maybe there. <laughs> right, I feel like... I'm trying to think what the goal looked like. Now. It was no, really a nice goal. Shit. It was like Shankland laid it off on the edge of the box and he like hit it bottom corner. In like the first oh, twenty five yes. minutes. Yeah, I remember it now. Oh <laughs> man, I think I, I genuinely think I was there. When was that? I need to look up when that oh, was. Oh god, like there. October or something. Yeah, maybe it was then. I think I, I left. Genuinely don't know. In October, I don't know. If you were actually oh, there, that makes it <laughs> so I think much. Alex funnier. Lowry's goal. Unless I'm just September, thinking the twenty sixth of September, twenty twenty three. I think Alex Lowry's goal is on my Instagram. <laughs> so I think. I, yeah, it is. Yep. This Even. is the best. I couldn't have imagined the quiz getting off to this good a start. That's I was class. there, mate. I'm raging. <laughs> right. Well, now is your multiple choice. So let's see if you Oh, can great. Yeah, I can right. maybe get one then. Lawrence Shankland, as we mentioned, was missing this past weekend, which is something of a rarity for him. How many games this season has he not been in the squad at all for? So, not that he's been on the bench or anything, but just he's not been available for selection. Is it A, 1? Is it B, 2? Is it C, 3? Or D, 4? Hmm. I don't feel like I remember him being out before because there would have been an absolute... Oh, was he out once before? Was there a game when we thought he was maybe going to be leaving? And then he doesn't. He wasn't in the lineup the next time. We all shot ourselves. I don't know if that's I've just made that up or not. But then I think before we, I think at the start of this podcast, you said for the first time this season, Alan Shankland wasn't in the team. So either was I maybe thinking correct. about the quiz and putting doubt in your head? Oh my god! <laughs> I don't know if I, if I trust you <laughs> at the start. <laughs> Uh, and maybe you've just got it wrong, or you've been playing with my mind. I think I don't think he's been missing though, has he? I'm gonna. I'm just gonna have to say he's that it is the first time that he wasn't in the squad. So, oh no! I said at the start of this podcast for the first time this season, Warren Shankland was missing in the league. Oh, for... <laughs> <laughs> it was two, was it? Was... You are correct. There was one game. It was the Spartans Cup game during the January transfer oh, window. Was. And everyone was like, he's going to Rangers because he doesn't want to get yeah. himself cupped. Oh, I remember it as well. I don't know why I didn't just go with my gut. That's so... <laughs> <laughs> I've done the most Adam thing ever there. Just I not was with my gut. literally about to say, it's like Adam's in front of me. Incredible. <laughs> right. Oh, for God's sake. True I, or false? I said I was going to get zero, mate, and we're on track. <laughs> right. 50-50. Come on. True or false? Hearts have won more away games this season than any other previous season since 1992. I think I've maybe seen that somewhere, so I think that's true. Is that your final answer? Yes. This is where I did... Oh no, I did... put a different date? No, 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 no. The... the... The stat that I imagine you have seen is that we, I think it's oh, no. equaled since 1991, 1992, 10 away wins. However, what that stat has always put in the fine print is in the top flight. Because in both championship appearances, we won more than 10. We won 11 during the COVID season. And in the record I need to pay more attention to the way that your word answers. I'm we won 13. <laughs> I'm I'm actually seething. I'm so angry. 
<laughs> that was the first bullshit question because I deliberately worded it in a way that I was like, you'll have seen that stuff. You need to go easy on me, mate. I know, I feel bad. I keep thinking I've got Adam. <laughs> so God. what was the, the correct? So. so, it is false because 10 is right in the top fight, but then we won 13 in the record-breaking championship season yeah. a decade ago. So, uh, right. I've jumped on that too quickly. You have. I, have I even gave it. you a chance final answer and everything right last question before the who am i oh god <laughs> can you get well i'm not getting the who am i so <laughs> i need to get there this weekend as we mentioned we play our last game before the split against livingston yeah who were the two goal scorers for hearts the last time the sides met in january against livingston yes in so you don't need to what i think it i think the game finished 2-1 i might be wrong it might have been 2-0 but you don't need to get the Livingston goal scorer if there was one. And I'm saying that there were two separate goal scorers for both goals. Oh, mate. I mean, my first thought is to go Shanklin because he scores everywhere. I can't. Ken what? I'll give you three lives. Three lives? So what I mean by that is you have to get two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can get one wrong. think I'm trying to remember them was my my first thought is to go Shanks and Vargas but that that's just because answer? that's the two the two players that I know score goals yep well so you, you could say both of them and then if you've got a life I could give you if, if you've not got somehow both of them wrong you'd still get another chance I think I'll go my first one will be Lauren Shanklin Correct. Okay. Okay. That's that's giving me a bit of <laughs> a start. Um do I go Vargas? I feel like maybe I do go Vargas. Let's go Kenny Vargas. He doesn't even need the lives, he's got oh, two out of two. Let's go. Get I'm just in. so happy that I've not got zero now. <laughs> Absolutely buzzing. You've I'm not here, I don't want it. I'm also going to tell you, you've got two because I was going to say this quiz is out of six because you got a point for each. So you've got two. Oh, let's go. So if Adam I can't, asked, I can't remember the goals. Do you know what they were like? Um, so Shanklin, that was a game where Shanklin missed the penalty. It was in oh, his okay. run where he missed a penalty. Then Alan Forrest played a through ball for Kenny Vargas to run onto. And so it was at Livingston. Uh, just after yep. New Year. So he ran through. And then Shanklin scored a Rabona from the edge of the box. And it was like, he misses a penalty and then he scores a Rabona. I think Alan Forrest got the assist on that as well. I think he got two oh, assists. I do not remember that at all. Yeah. He scored a Rabona? Yeah, it was back-to-back -back games where he scored Rabonas. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. you mean uh, Travellers? Sorry, not a Rabona. That would be yeah, ridiculous. I, like, I would have remembered unbelievable. that. Travella, sorry, yeah. Yes, yeah, I remember it now. Yeah, I would have yeah, remembered yeah. if he scored a Rabona. I was like, bloody hell, Shaklin's been to Brazil, man. What's going on? <laughs> sorry, yeah, Travella. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, I remember. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. The important thing is you didn't get zero. You've got two. Delighted. So I'm, I'm, I'll happily so. go off now. Like, <laughs> so, who cares about the who am I? It's fine. Yeah, exactly. Right. So the who am I? I'm ready. I'm not. <laughs> but we're going for it anyway. Yeah. I have played in France, Germany, Scotland, Algeria, Turkey, Greece. Abu Dhabi and Luxembourg. Oh my God. I scored my one and only goal for Hearts in a massive result. I have won a league title. Alongside Hearts, I played for one other Scottish team and had trials at a further two. And I have a younger brother who is also a professional footballer. Who am I? I always like yeah, to do five clues. Got so the last one is just like whatever. Absolutely nothing came to my head there. Right. I've got this man's Wikipedia page up. You've got your two questions. Use them wisely. Algeria. Abu Dhabi. A lot of places. <laughs> oh. oh my God. And he's won a league title. He didn't say where. Yeah, he's won a league title. 
yeah, I'm going to have to ask for some. What am I going to ask you? I feel like nationality might help me. You didn't tell me that, did you? I didn't. No. But what was the go? Can you go for the nations again? Sorry. Yes, of course. I've played in France, Germany, Scotland, Algeria, Turkey, Greece, Abu Dhabi, and Luxembourg. Wow. The first one was um, sorry. France. France. So you maybe French, or maybe you've not done it in that order, because I know that you do this. Is he? Mm. Yeah. Can I get his nationality, please? Of course. The nationality of this person is French. Oh, God, there's so many French people. However, because of the way you asked it, I can give you this. Oh. His nationality is French, but he did not play for the French national team. He represented someone else internationally. Interesting. So it was a good first question. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. What am I thinking here? What do I ask you next? Because I can't think of it. It's, it's always horrible when you get... I always, you I mean, honestly, I, I said this to you before I came on. I, I, whenever I play along with these in the car, and I'm listening, <laughs> I'm like, I don't have a single clue. <laughs> I just don't have a clue. And then you also, you like, uh, yeah, there's all, you usually do get them. And I'm like, I cannot believe they've just pulled out. <laughs> Adam hates how I just seem to have no idea then at the very just, last second. I just don't have that kind of knowledge. Eh? I just That's, fair. That's absolutely fair. Um, what about, can I ask you? Oh. What do I ask you? Can I ask you what? This is my last question, right? Yeah, I was going to say before you ask a question, do you want to hear all the clues again? Yeah, let's hear them all again, please. Right, so I've played for France, Germany, Scotland, Algeria, Turkey, Greece, Abu Dhabi, and Luxembourg. I scored my one and only goal for Hearts in a big result. Oh, yeah. I've won a league title. Alongside Hearts, I played for one other Scottish team and had trials at a further two. And I have a younger brother who is also a professional footballer. God. One and only goal for Hearts in a big game. But you've told me that he's that he's French, but he's represented another nation. Yep. So that that I don't know if that that gives me anything because I'm like you could be any you could be from anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Do I Good ask what the other nation is? The, the nation that he's so he's played for a nation in like for, for, he's played for his country. But yes, it's not he France. has. Yes, that's. I'm not taking. Don't worry. I'm not taking that as your second question. I wonder if I ask you what the other nation is, and then just have a bash. Not a bad tactic. Is it a bad tactic? It's been used to success. Before on the podcast, that tactic. Laurie Dunsire did it once. Did he? Yeah. I can't remember who it was, um, but I remember there, were, there was a similar situation and he got it because of that. I think I'm going to ask that. This man what? Yeah. Let's do it. was born in France, however, represented Algeria at international level. Oh, so you said he played in Algeria. Bloody hell. Oh, God, mate. You've really stumped me here. Algeria. <laughs> I'm slightly, quietly terrified that we've done this one already, but you've not, so it's fine. Yeah, I've definitely not. I don't think we have. I don't think we have. I, I think it's been suggested a couple of times by listeners, so I've just got it in my right. head that we have done, but I don't think we have. <sighs> Algerian. Algerian. I don't even know his position, man. <laughs> what have I done here? Again, what just because it'll annoy Adam? Do you want a free question? Oh no, no, I couldn't, I couldn't do that. I support I it. I could not do that. I, you I could. couldn't do that. I don't want to do that. If you're really struggling, I'll give you one. No, I don't. Well, I've heard of them. I'd be surprised if you hadn't. 
Oh, really? Oh, I, I also, I, this makes it sound like I was trying to be really horrible to you. I've realized I haven't scrolled down the page. I have another clue. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it's called <laughs> I have A, B, C, D, E. And then I was looking going, why have I not written down who it is? And then I realized I scrolled down. I've got another clue. So the other clue is, is that I went on to make over 60 appearances for Hearts and said it was one of my favorite times, despite winning League Silverware elsewhere. So he played over 60 games for us. Oh. Oh, dear. I'm trying to think if there's a name that's even coming to my head, but there's not. So it's an Algerian man who played over 60 games for us. I was thinking, where's Mehdi Tarul from? But I don't think he's Algerian. I think he's... I don't know where he's from. I don't think... Is he Moroccan? I don't know. Oh. Nah, I hate this so much. Um, I don't know. I think I'm just going to have to say the one name that I have in my head, but I don't think he's even from there. What is your guess? My guess is John Souter. Okay, so... <laughs> can safely say that John Suter is not Algerian. He does have a, a brother who is also a professional footballer. And John Suter has scored against the team this man scored and is the same position as John Suter. So, yeah, so actually, he's a centre-back and he scored against, if it's an important goal, Celtic. Yep. Can you get it from these clues? Nope. So you were very... In terms of when you were saying Meditao, he you were right, he is Moroccan. Mm. And Morocco and Algeria are neighboring countries within Africa. Yeah. So you were geographically close. However, this man was Ismail Bouzid. Oh my god. I I don't think I've heard that name for for years. I hadn't thought of Bouzid in ages. I don't think that's even in my brain anywhere until you just fair. said it right there. That's absolutely fair. So to explain the clues. He played in all the countries. Um, the league title he won was when he was at Galatasaray. He won the Super League. Really? Yeah. Wow. 2007, 2008, he became the first Algerian to win it as well. So I don't even remember out. what he looks like now. They not play for Kilmarnock as well. Correct. The other team that he played for was Kilmarnock, uh, was <laughs> also having trials at East Fife and Rangers. Wow. So, I mean, I would never have ever got that. And that yeah. Name's... And then you were correct. I'm going to be looking him up all night. In terms of the other, the one and only goal he scored, he scored a 68th minute winner against Celtic. 2-1 December 2009. The first goal for us was scored from the penalty spot by everyone's favourite pundit, Michael Stewart. Love it. Love so, yeah, it. I feel like I remember like, seeing his name like playing FIFA back in the day with Hart. Yeah, that's fair. But that's, that's like the way. only time I would have even, yeah. He looked terrifying. He was six foot yeah. four, just a big, scary centre half. <laughs> oh, well, I, I'm honestly, like I said, I, I knew I wasn't going to get that. But but listen, that I'm not zero and five. You didn't get a donut. You've done Puzzle. better than most quizzes Adam's ever done on this. <laughs> yeah. So take that away for you. It's fine. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on, John. It's hugely appreciated. No worries at all. Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed it. And where can people get you on social media to keep up with all the work you're doing down in Bristol? Yeah, well, my, my Instagram and my Twitters are Jalen Films. And also, if you want some sketch comedy madness, uh, you can follow Fix This Window on Instagram as well, or TikTok, which uh, I know you're a big fan of. Yes, definitely. Genuinely go and watch that. It's excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. We are forever at Petty Paisley and all forms of social Pettipaisley at gmail.com if you want to fire us over an email. I am at dmcaver22 on Twitter. We'll be back next week. Adam's back, apparently. That's what he's saying. Mm. Yeah, exactly. We've got a, I've got his replacement here anyway. It might be Jordan next week as well. Who knows? <laughs> but Adam is meant to be back as we'll dissect everything that happens in the Livingston game and preview Scottish Cup semi-final. But until then, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Cheers.